to Build Live in London. I'm your host, Ramel London. I'm very excited as we have three incredible men from a movie that you need to see. They are from the intent to the come up. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> Yep. Yes, I've got lots of questions for these guys, but of course, if you want to tweet us, you can do so using at Build Series LDN. And also, if you're watching on Facebook, leave a comment below and we'll try and get to you very, very shortly. So, Femi, Nikki, Getz, you're in the building. I am very, very happy to see you. Um, it's just two years ago you brought out The Intent, mm -hmm. which was brilliant, and this looks like the perfect prequel. So, before we get chatting, let's take a look. Yes, yes! Yeah, yeah. It's looking huge. So you've got a cast of some of the biggest urban artists in the UK, as well as some of the best Jamaican artists as well right now. And it looks super action-packed. So how does this differ from the first movie that you released? If any, if at all. I feel like, obviously, that we tried to capture the same spirit as the intent, okay. which was like, you know, we wanted it to feel real. I think what people liked about the intent was beyond, like, you know, the fact that we're able to extract high production value on such a low budget was the fact that actually it felt real, it felt really authentic. Yeah. And, and so um, we kept that, but you know, we had to build on that. We got, you know, sort of bigger talent. We've got Getz involved, we've got Adam Deacon, we've got Sharon Duncan Brewster, we've got Young Bane, we've got Lady Leisha, do you get what I'm saying? So we've got, you know, slight talent that I've loved over the years. Yes. And at the same time that I consider, you know, added bigger value to the production. And like, you know, we spent more money on the production. We shot in Jamaica. I mean, we flew over like, what, 20 something people wow. over yeah. to Jamaica. And um, we um, we had stunts, like, you know, it was it was just felt bigger yes. in that, you know, there was higher production values. But at the same time, I would say we, we, um, we reached out to talent that was bigger. Yeah, that's amazing. I mean, just two years later, you've turned this around. Um, so how soon after the first one did you start working on this? And like creatively, production-wise, did you have to do anything different between you two? Was there more headbutting or anything like that? Well, um, when, when the first intent came out, after we saw it, it was such a huge success, we knew that we wanted to make the second one. Yeah. So Femi was like, we've got to get on to make the script. We need to make the script. We need to make the script. So we sat down for about six to eight months doing the script. And we got the script finished and we knew it was time to like search around to find a deal for it. So wow. we were searching, searching and we, we linked. I think we're doing it simultaneously. Yeah. So we're doing the deal and trying to do the script like at the same, same time. time. Yeah. It was a bit mental. That is like, a lot. But yeah. you know, but it's, I suppose that's how, that's how we work. It's sort of like, you know, it's all or nothing. And like, you know, that's why I suppose me and Nikki are successful in that we've been able to like, we just really, we work relentlessly. We speak to each other first thing in the morning, yeah. speak to each other last thing at night and throughout the day, do you know what it's I mean? It's like a marriage. Like, it's mad, <laughs> it's, that. it's mad. <laughs> but, but that's how we, we are successful is that, you know, we're just relentless. We just really keep going at it no matter what. Definitely, so music and, and the artists play a huge part in this film. So much so that Island Records partnered with you to bring this to life. Mm. So. Um, why did you take such a musical approach for this film? I just think that like the music artists have a massive impact on culture and I think like whatever they do, people take notice. Yeah. And I feel like if you look at some of the old school films from America, like Juice, they had Tupac in it. Yeah. And if you look in In Too Deep, they had LL Cool J and Boys in the Hood had Ice Cube. We're just sort of following that blueprint and that formula in the UK. And I just felt that a lot of the artists, like there's such amazing talent like Getz, who I knew, and Femi was very confident in that we think, like if Getz was in a movie, everybody would want to see it. Like, He's so good at what he does, like, let's audition him. So we auditioned him and he, he blew us away. So we're here now. And also they're cultural icons. Like, you know, yeah. they're beyond, like, Getz. Look at Getz. Look how he's dressed today. Like, the source is real. <laughs> let's give him like, a round of applause for his dressing. I mean, he's looking very snazzy. I, I'm not that. Like. It, it's, it's, beyond, it's beyond the music, isn't it? It's about actually the cultural moves that, yeah. like, these guys are doing. Like, you know, you've got, like, Getz is in a film... Like Skeptic's got his trainers, Crept and Conan have got their their shot. Yep. Like, so it's like it's actually their their positioning within culture transcends music. Yeah. The music is just like, you know, the conduit to communicate what else like they want to contribute to culture. And, yeah. and like, you know, we're just excited to be part of that, man. Yeah. And I think it's good to see like young, young 
kids to see like where Getz has come from, yeah. him changing his life around, becoming a movie star, becoming one of the biggest artists in this country. I think it's great role models to see these people in these positions so kids can look at them and think, wow, Getz done that. I'm from his area, like maybe I can be a movie star. So to put people like him on the screen is amazing for them to have hope and faith that they can do the same thing he's doing. That is very true. Well, I'm going to play a little bit of devil's advocate because Femi, you're an actor and you know there's lots of amazing acting talent in mm -hmm. the UK. So do you feel like some actors might be a bit like, hold on, why not me? I, why are you choosing artists? I am um, on one level, um, there's more actors in the intent. I always have this debate. People always like, you use so many rappers, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, name them. Yeah. And then you start naming them, and then you get to, like, the third or fourth name, and then you run out of names. Like, because even on the poster, you've, in essence, got a balance of actors and rappers. Like, yeah. and, and so, so, like, you know, at the end of the day, I feel like that's not necessarily true. And like we said, our template is based on the American model. It's based on, like, In Too Deep. It's based on Juice. It's pay, based on pay, Paid in Full. Yeah. It's based on all those films. That Tupac, like, you know, Tupac and Janet Jackson yeah. and Above the Rim together, it was just them two on the poster. Like, yeah. do you know what I mean? That's true. And so, like, Poetic you know, Justice. Uh, Poetic poet Justice. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wrong, yeah, film. Yeah, got, yeah, wrong got, film. Wrong film. Wrong film. We but, know what you mean. But, but, <laughs> You know, but at the end of the day, ultimately, it's that, you know, we're referencing what we saw, like what we grew up on in the early noughties and the late nineties, which was that, you know, seeing rappers that you loved in movies, yet at the same time, you need actors to make it work. Like True. this film wouldn't work without your Adam Deacon yeah. and Ashley Chin and myself, Nikki. Like, do you know what I mean? It wouldn't work without Sharon Duncan Brewster, who's like one of the like best actors oh, we have in the country. Definitely. And so um, it's just a balance of talent like, doing their best. So, yeah. like, I don't look at rappers as just rapping. Like I said, they're cultural yeah. icons to me. Like, And we shouldn't box them in, like... You wouldn't watch this film because there may be people who see this international who don't know Getz as a music artist, but just see him as an actor, you know? Yeah. So it's like... You, he's as good as anybody in the film, so you can't box him in and say, oh, he's a rapper, he shouldn't be acting, he's allowed to do whatever he wants to do as long as he's good at it. That's what's about talent. They are talking you up, man. <laughs> no, it's about true. talent. It's, it's, really, it's really just about talent, I think. Definitely. Ultimately, like, if someone is talented enough to play a role, they should be given the opportunity. Remember, I came from, I was an A-level student when I got kid -oldered. Like, I wasn't going to act in school. I wasn't anything. So if it was just actors were availed those roles, yeah. I wouldn't have been in that movie. So my outlook on who should be in movies or who should get the opportunity to act is kind of shaped by that, in the, by the fact that I was just a random kid doing four A-levels, English, maths, and whatever I was yeah. doing. Like, and then I was in a movie, like, at the same time. So when I think back to that, I'm really shaped by that way of thinking. Definitely. Well, get... They've said how amazing you are. So you personally, how did you feel taking on this role? I mean, like we've said, being known for being like a grime legend, now you're taking on the lead role. How was that for you? I was very unsure. Are you serious? Yeah. yeah. Why is that? Um, new territory, something that I've never done before. Um, it was Femi and Slim's faith first that even made me make the phone call to my mum and ask her what she thought. Oh, wow. You know, because I was very hesitant at first. Like, I was, like, it was mad them asking me that for the lead especially as yeah. well. Um, them putting everything on the line like that, you know. And then I just, I spoke to my mum and she said, don't block your blessings. And I said, I want to do, well, I was going to do the audition as well anyway. Yeah. I went to do an audition, but it wasn't with Slim or Femi. So it was a people that didn't wouldn't be biased towards me. That's that's you know what I'm good. saying. And when they said that I done well in the audition, it made me feel much more confident. Amazing. You know? That is like overcoming every doubt. That is amazing. I really like that. And big up mom for that one as well. Yeah, one hundred percent. Definitely. So I mean, I, I was quite surprised that you said that because you've been known to have different personas: Ghetto, yeah. Gets, Jay Clark. Yeah. Now you're playing Jay. <laughs> <laughs> it was a mad coincidence. It was actually... I wanted to change the name, but it was too late. No, it works. No. It works. Yeah. So, 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 yeah, like I said, I was quite surprised that taking on a new role or character would, would be doubting, doubtful um, for you. So why or how did you get to this part? Then? Get Skittle and Jay Clark. They're all, they all represent different times in my life. Right. 
So that's not me actually in a role. That's just me being me. Okay. You know, so that's not hard to do or tap into. Um, reading a script, seeing the way this guy reacts to different situations, knowing that I don't react like that as a person or I wouldn't have said that at that time when he said that. Yeah. I really had to dig deep because you're going against everything that your natural body and mind is telling you to do. Yeah. You know, you're reading a script and saying, okay, I would have done this at that time, but I'm not him. Yeah. You know, so to become him, tap in and really see, even just move different, look different, you know, loads of, loads of different things. Are, and I was surrounded by great people, Slim, you know, um, Femi, Ashley Chin, very seasoned in the field. So, and I weren't afraid to ask for advice. That's good. You know, if I'm, if I'm doing it wrong here, it's not, it's not my field naturally. So I was just coming to the table as, as someone that was willing to learn and learn quickly and, and adapt to the craft. Amazing. It looks like you nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, you lot must have spent a lot of time together. Are there any memorable me like memorable moments or like bloopers? Anything that you I think cut Jamaica, out? no? <laughs> I think Jamaica was the best part of Jamaica, the filming. Yeah. I mean, tell us about it. It looks good. Are you, are you on our Instas? Yeah, I follow all of you on social media. <laughs> so I feel Did like you think we were shooting a film. <laughs> It looked like they were having a party. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Every think, day. I think we, we went to Jamaica recently and like Popcorn, who was in the film, he was like, oh, I want to, I want to, can I, can you, I see a bit of the film or like showing it to them. They're like, oh my gosh, it's really good. Like, you sort of smashed it. Because we made it look so fun, like you're actually doing it with everyone. Yeah. That it was like, Oh my gosh, we actually shooting a movie. Yeah. Like, but like, where for me the one of the key days where it was like, you know, super fun and like a bit like crazy in Jamaica was like there was a day. The first day we're filming with Popcorn, he's in like Ochi. We've come to Ochi's Rios, and then this we've I've driven in a car with Nikki and some other people down this hill, <laughs> but Nikki's like. Gets is on a bike. He's on a quad bike. Why is Gets on a quad bike riding down the hill? What if he falls off? Blah, blah. Like, what's wrong with Gets? And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, what? Gets is on a quad bike. The, like, the, the road down the hill had the holes in it. Oh, my God. And I was like, why is Gets on a quad bike? And, like, we're all stressing out. And then it's one of the shots you see in the film. <laughs> so it works yeah. then. <laughs> And so, because after... Was it supposed what, to be in the film? No, no, because what happened was we're shooting a montage <laughs> sequence. Popcorn has turned up with, like, quad bikes, bikes, like, he loves the whole it. He loves of everything. It. He's turned up with, like, just every form of vehicle you could think of, like, to this set. And, like, a hundred guys or something, like, and girls. It was, like, carnival. So the oh next scene, God. we're coming from one scene to the next scene. The next scene, I've arrived at the location... And it's just guys doing stunts on a bike. But Getz is doing the most. <laughs> yeah, we was really scared. We was really scared. And we was trying to get Getz off his bike. He's like, leave me, leave me. You're and I, thinking our you insurance. To be honest, I was thinking about his mum. I was thinking, yeah. what would I have to say to his mum if he's in hospital or yeah. anything happens to him? So yeah. I was like, I wanted to get him off his bike. but It's all my mum's fault. Like. But he's a real, he rides a bike really well. And another good time in Jamaica is that we all took a trip to Blue Lagoon. It's like a beautiful place in Jamaica. And... All the guys just jumped into the, the massive sea, but they can't swim. What? Yes, so, couldn't swim. And he jumped in. So you jumped in knowing full well that you can't swim? Yeah. And then what? Life's about risk. Yeah, <laughs> so <laughs> it's like... He was in Jamaica risking it all, Gets, I'm telling you. <laughs> so we were just... The production was just like thinking, oh my God, what is going on? All these, all our actors are in the water and they can't swim. It was just... It was very stressful but fun at the same time. But we got through it. We're here, so... <laughs> Clearly, Clearly, you survived. Oh, I remember the bike there. I was just like, you know what? They're not getting off the bike. I said to the DOP, just shoot, just shoot. <laughs> like... <laughs> That like, you know, we could use it, like, you know. <laughs> but yeah, no, that was crazy. I love crazy. that. You lot are crazy. This is what makes great creative content, just making the most of it, using what you get out of it. Exactly. So is there anything you had to sacrifice in this movie? Anything that you, you felt you had to, you know, I think make the, changes? The length of the movie. Okay. Like, it was really long film. Like, the first cut was, like, what, three, three hours? Three hours, three and a half Three hours, hours and a bit. And so... um. So we shot a lot, 
Like, yeah. you know, we shot a lot that we didn't bank on shooting, like gets on a bike in, <laughs> outside. <laughs> like, stuff like that meant that, you know, we ended up with a lot of content. And so it was very difficult to trim it down to what, an hour, 40 minutes yeah. from three hours. So I think that was the main sacrifice, actually was in the edit, which it normally is. Yeah, and Gets, obviously, you you still have been busy doing performances, shows, so having to balance this, and also with a new album on the way as well, did yeah. you ever think, I don't know if I can do all of this? Um, no, I didn't think that that wasn't a problem. I just wanted to be levels with everyone and and really just bring something to the table. Yeah. Because when two people believe in you, it's not like I asked to be in a film. So when two people believe in you, you really don't want to want to let the side down. Yeah, that's good, man. And obviously you haven't let anyone down because this is out and also Ghetto Gospel, Ghetto, I need to say this properly, Ghetto Gospel, the New Testament is out on the 14th of September. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. Um, yeah, I don't, um, I don't know if anyone knows the backstory behind that, but Ghetto Gospel was one of my first um, CDs, albums, mixtapes, whatever you want to call it. I made that when I was 21 and, and, and people... They call it a classic, but um, due to certain resources and how the culture was back then, I, I never got to tour that album. Okay. So I never really got to see how it had touched people. Or the content was very different from maybe what a fan might be used to after the freedom of speech era or yeah. artillery era. So I never got to tour that album. I think it was last year, January, I was offered 10 years celebration at Roundhouse for Get All Gospel. And that sold out, and uh, I got to perform tracks that I never performed before. So when I performed those tracks, and I saw how things, songs like "Closest Thing to Heaven" for my mum had touched people, wow. and you know, like everyone's used to me at high energetic yes. level performance, shelling, yeah, and that's the world that I'm from. So seeing how you can still shell in the arena with doing tracks like that. It's a different shelling. It's a standing ovation shelling. Amazing. So is no. that some of the inspiration behind your yeah. most recent single, Black Rose? Because that was inspired by your daughter, which yeah. is beautiful. Yeah. If you've seen the video, if yeah. you haven't actually, check it out. It's amazing. I so wanted to get, yeah, I wanted to get back to a, a wider variety of subject matter, you know? Um, so what are you saying in this in this new album then? Loads of things, but not just only from my perspective, from different people's perspective. Because when I stand in my own perspective, I find, my, I find myself being very judgmental. Yeah. So just having different conversations with people and being very understanding of, are oh, you from over there? So you don't understand why it's like this here. Yeah. Or I don't understand why it's like this over there because I've not been brought up there. But being able to write from both perspectives, you know, that was very important across the album. That's yeah. Brilliant. That's brilliant. All right, so what's next for all of you? I've got a Twitter question from Caleb who wants to know, is there going to be a third part to the intent? And also, what are the plans for the next coming weeks? I think there's definitely going to be a third part. I think everything comes in a trilogy. Um, I don't know how many more we're going to do. It's not, I don't think it's going to be as bad as Fast and Furious. So. <laughs> <laughs> They're on like, what, number nine? Nine or, <laughs> nine or ten. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, I think we've got that idea already, like sort of mapped out. Amazing. Really rough. Like, But this is how we were when the intent came out. We right. kind of had roughly what we wanted to do with the intent. Yeah. Like we knew, we knew we wanted to go to Jamaica. We knew roughly what the story was, but it was just like... Over time, you just like add flesh to it. We've got um, a kids' movie that we want to make. Okay. Um, we've got a, a holiday sort of like music slash holiday movie that we're making. Yeah. And um, wow. we've got um, a rom com that we want to make as well. But ultimately, like the people, I think for the intent, we have to do the intent free just to to um, give the people one final go. Uh, it's just fun. It's like, yeah, exciting. Yeah, it's fun. It's like, it's an action thriller. It's like, it's sort of like a fun little genre to, to sort of operate in. Yeah. But then we want to open up and, and work with genres. You just don't want to be boxed into like one genre of film. Definitely. So I feel like we definitely want to explore other films that we want to do. I think the kids one for us is a very big movie that we feel that the UK needs. We need an urban kids film. There hasn't yeah. been one. Why is there no, like, like gets the same reputation of her, his daughter and my daughter and Femi's son. So I think we need to have that on the screen. So I think that's for us to do. That I think it's brilliant. that having your, for me, was like when, when me and Nikki were talking about it, it was like, you know what, I've got 
my kids want to watch my films, but they but, can't. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's And fair. that's very, like, you know, but I watch films with my kids all the time. We've, like, me and my older son, we've been going to cinema together since he was about three. Like, you know, wow. we used to take it. I used to take him to cinema from young. And so, like, you know, we experience other people's content together. Like, why do I work in film and my kids can't be part of that process? And so, like, for me, I feel like, yeah, we need to do something for them. And something that represents them, that looks like them, speaks like them as well. So, Amazing. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Can we give a big round of applause to Femi, Nikki and Get? So, The Intent 2 is out on the 21st of September. And, of course, Gets' his new album, Ghetto Gospel. The New Testament is out next week on the 14th of September. Get involved. Support. Thank you for watching. I've been your host from Royal London. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.